program host for the program Coming Home. We began by meeting at uh, a hotel in the ballroom, and from there we, we uh, came upon a property that we are currently at today. And, and, and I get on them all the time. We have to change our thinking if we're ever going to walk in the kingdom of God. Well, hello again, and welcome to the Coming Home program. You probably recognize this gentleman sitting next to me, Pastor John Cheddar from Independence, Iowa. He has been, he's a, he's a friend and a familiar face around KFXB here in Dubuque. John for a long time had his own program on and I've known John Chetta for probably, how many years? Oh gosh, I don't know, 15 years now? 15, 20 years and you know, John's like a role model to me. He's younger than me by a few years, but there's things, that, qualities about John that I admire and I, I would, if there's things about, about John, I'd like to be like John in those ways, but especially when it comes to his teaching and preaching, and you're gonna have the opportunity later in the program to hear him do that. But Pastor John and his wife Deb have pastored Living Waters Church in Independence for how long, John? We've been there almost, I think, about 25 years now. Well then, I've known yeah. you that almost the oh, whole yep, time. Yep, yep. pretty close mm -hmm. to that, because I mean, through, that's about how long Dottie and I have been in mm -hmm. West Union, is 25 years, but, um, you, you not only have your family, church family in Independence, but you also have one in Manchester. Yeah, we just, uh, about four or five years ago, we started a fellowship uh, uh, in Manchester, and we meet mm -hmm. on Saturday nights uh, over there. And uh, we had a little trouble this, uh, uh, this, uh, this spring, and, uh, or late winter, early spring, uh, the, the place where we were at, they, they sold the building. And, and uh, there was a time where I thought that uh, maybe our mission in Manchester was done because we couldn't find any place. And, wow. and uh, you know, really quick and short, I says, I finally, I looked over every place over there. We couldn't find anything that, that fit our needs. Uh, and so finally I told the people, I said, I can't, I can't do this anymore. I said, I can't, I can't go on and not keep knocking on doors and answering phone calls and, and, uh, and things like that. So I, said, I told the people on the last Saturday night, I says, unless God calls, <laughs> this is gonna be our last Saturday night. Wow! And uh, I said, just can't do it anymore. And uh, Monday morning, I got a phone call. <laughs> I got a phone call, Rowan, and uh, it wasn't God, but it uh, uh, it, it was must have been one of his female uh, angels. Angels, uh, it, was, it was a female voice, and she was the director of a uh, nursing home there. And she said, we heard you're looking for a place to hold worship services, and uh, we have a beautiful chapel. Uh, there and uh, it's not used on Saturday nights and uh, you're more than welcome to use wow. it. You can give us a donation, you know, whatever you want, and however it, and so uh, I also had to ask her because we have two uh, uh, Bible studies uh, that we do on Sunday nights and Wednesday nights and uh, she said that was perfectly fine there. So uh, it was just amazing. So we've been having a ball there now. We've been there now for about three months. Uh, and uh, just worshiping there right at a nursing home, and uh, we invite the residents to come and, and join us, and uh, we're just wow. having a great time. So God, God is so good. It's just amazing what, uh, what, God, what God does when you finally say, hey, I can't do it anymore. Put it in your hands. Isn't and he, says, he sa usually says it's about time. It's about time. <laughs> yeah, I've been there a few times. I think I'm there right now again mm -hmm. for uh, another round. Of, so it's going to be interesting to see what God does to... to, to pick me up and shove me forward into what his next step plan is. But um, Pastor John, I, did I hear you correctly? You are doing Saturday nights, Sunday nights, and Wednesday nights in Manchester? Well, you heard me correctly, but I'm not doing them. Okay. Uh, we do Saturday nights okay. uh, in there, and I preach uh, there probably two Saturdays of the month, and then I have uh, other people come in and share. My assistant pastor uh, you know, shares one Saturday, and then we have somebody else. Uh, uh, and then we have our church on Sunday morning over at in Independence. Independence. Uh, but then Sunday night and Wednesday night, uh, well, we have Wednesday night at our church, so we have that. In Independence. But, yeah, but Sunday and Wednesday night in Manchester, I have uh, my pastor friend, uh, Bill Reed. Uh, oh, wow. And, uh, and he holds the, uh, uh, the Bible studies on Sunday and Wednesday That's got to be so, good. So it's powerful, and uh, <laughs> they're growing, and uh, it's a whole different group on, on, uh, from the Saturday nights to the Bible study nights. It's not the same people. It's kind of an interesting group. Well, you know, it's amazing what God is doing because church, what we have, have always envisioned church being, is in a state of transformation mm -hmm. now. It really is. God, there's a whole new paradigm 
as some have been talking about for years. You know, we need a new wineskin. We need a new approach because to reach this, to reach our society, to reach this generation or this with this culture that we're dealing with, we've got to change how we do church in order Absolutely, to reach Absolutely, yeah. Yep. So let's talk about the Independence Church for a few minutes. Now, you've been there the longest there, Pastor John, and uh, just share a little bit with the people about, you know, the ministries that you offer there, some of the people. You've got some incredible people there at your church in Independence, some people that I've known even for years, and you're, they're blessed and you're blessed. Yeah, well, we just... Uh... Uh, we just have a great time. Uh, we just, every, every single Sunday, we just preach uh, the blood of Jesus Christ and, and Jesus Christ crucified yep. and uh, uh, the old song, the old rugged cross. I mean, that, that's, that's the essence of the gospel of, of Jesus Christ. And uh, uh, it's a very simple message. Uh, uh, we are overcomers. Yes. By the blood of Jesus Christ, it says that in Revelation, yep. but and also by the word uh, of our testimony. And I think I teach and I teach and I teach and I preach uh, that we, we, as Christians, we have to either change our thinking or get our thinking on the victory of Jesus Christ. One of you are stay on that because the Bible says in Proverbs, as a man thinks, so is he. That's right. You know, and then at the same time, at the, as, as, as we start to get our thinking straight, and by thinking straight, I mean, you know, believe in healing, believe in a victory, believe in overcoming. Line. You know, not don't listen to the stuff that the devil tells us or even right. what maybe our teachers told us or what our parents told us mm -hmm. or what our neighbors. You'll never mount anything. You'll never, you know, this yeah. and never. You're going to be the, you know, the, the dumbest in class. And, and, and I say this with all sincerity because uh, um, it, it was last, last week we had Father's Day. We celebrated Father's Day, and, I, and at the end of the service, I asked anybody that if they had a bad relationship with their father, would they come up and we would pray for them? Oh, my. And I could not believe almost half of the people in our church. Adults. Adults came forward having some, and men too, not just women, mm -hmm. men and women having a bad relationship because... Uh, it has to be difficult, Pastor Rowan, for someone to look to God I know, and father. call him father when they have not had a good relationship yep. with their father. And yep. that has to be a tough transition. Uh, I have a hard time relating to that because my dad was a good dad. Yes. Uh, and and he, you know, he had his mistakes just like we all do, but he was a, I knew he loved me. I knew he was yes. always there for me. But then at the same time, I also had... Uh, men in the church who are fathers to come and stand behind mm -hmm. these people and to become a spiritual father, you, wow. know, you know, for them. So I'm really hoping for a miracle, you know, for that. And uh, so we just have, you know, we, I really stress over and over and over again, you know, you know, to think correctly, think, think the right way. And then also in uh, Proverbs where it says, uh, life and death is in the power of tongue. Being careful what we say. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> and not just in, you know, I'm, I'm, I, I feel like I'm coming down with a cold or anything like that, but no, just the, just the saying that you know I'm I, I'm never I'm not gonna get my bills paid or yep. you know this isn't gonna work out this is, you know that negative thinking you know it, it becomes in the uh, in the world of psychology it becomes that self fulfilling prophecy it does. Uh, and next thing you know we're we're almost activating a negative lifestyle and yes. so you know think think think. Think the Bible, think the way the Bible, yes. you know, what's the old saying is, I, I am what the Bible says I am, and That's I can right. do what the Bible says I can do. And, uh, uh, and, then, and then speak life, speak life in that. So, but other than that, we're, having, we're just going to be having uh, vacation Bible school here in a little bit, and we're all excited about that, about having about 40 to 45 kids, you know, for mm -hmm. that. And uh, uh, in other ministries, we have a, a men's group that meets, and uh, we get together and pray for each other. And uh, uh, we just started a women's group uh, that... Uh, uh, is going through uh, various hurts that women have had over the years and, That's uh, and, important. and, and praying and, and reaching out to each other and using the Word of God to, mm -hmm. to get healed. You know, Pastor John, you, in the introduction to the Coming Home program, uh, which it, this is, plays every time the program opens, you're one of the pastors 
that's on there. It says, we've got to change. <laughs> How does that go? <laughs> we've got to change the way we think. There we go. <laughs> and isn't it really, you know, the Bible says be renewed in the spirit of your mind. And it isn't just what your thoughts are, but it's deep down inside of us. Why we even think that way? That's the, the root. Jesus said he came to lay the ax to the root. And we, when we have a, have a habit, you might say, of thinking negatively about ourselves, it's not just at the conscious level. There's a deeper problem inside. And, you know, in 2 Corinthians chapter 10, 3 through 5, when it talks about the weapons of our warfare, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. It, it talks about bringing every thought into captivity to the obedience of Christ. And, and yep. literally to, in, to bring our thoughts in line with His Word. That's our spiritual warfare. Amen, yeah. Yeah, you know, and also in in, the, in Second Corinthians, I just I love where it's the uh, uh, Second Corinthians uh, five seventeen. And, you know, it says, yep. "Therefore, if any man be in Christ, right. he's a new creature." That's right. You know, the old things are passed away, and become everything becomes you know new. And so much we we dwell in the past. I know. Uh, and I know, and I and, and I know it's easier said than done. I'm not trying to share to anybody out there that you know, oh yeah, you just gotta you know just do this, do this. No, it's it's hard. Uh, it's difficult. But the bottom line is, it's your life That's right it's your life and and god wants you to be an overcomer he wants you to be able to say at one time in your life i can do all things through christ yes. who gives me the strength and everything depends on christ but it's a matter of us doing you know i just i just read uh, uh the other day i was i was uh, uh reading a little study on on prayer mm -hmm. and uh it, and and what caught my attention pastor roland was that uh there's only one place in the Bible, or at least in the New Testament, where it talks about, you know, praying for healing and victory. And that's in the book of James. Right. But that's where it says, but it actually it says, pray the prayer of faith. faith. But all through the four Gospels, Jesus never once prayed that's for right. healing. He did not. He just took authority. He spoke. You know, over, over that. And that has, <laughs> I've, been, I've been just dwelling on that over and over and over again. Sometimes we just get in this and we just pray, please God heal me if it's be thy will and you know, all right. that. You know? And uh, sometimes we just got to get up there. I think Paul says in Ephesians, you know, when you've done everything you can do, stand. Yes. Stand. And I don't think a lot of Christians know it, and I didn't know it for many years, that when we stand and we look at the devil, eyeball to eyeball, he starts to wither. He starts to get scared. Yep. Because it's just like the, uh, uh, who was it, Isaiah or Elijah in the Old Testament where his servant said, uh, it was Saul the enemy in you know, Isaiah, I think it was, and he, he says, uh, dear Lord, open the eyes of my servant. Yeah, to see <laughs> Remember the, that? And when he opened the eyes, he fire, saw all, yeah. all of heaven's angels oh, and the yeah. warrior angels behind you. Know, sometimes we just got to open up our spiritual eyes and yep. see that when we speak the word of God, heaven stands behind it. Yes. Heaven stands behind our word. And yep. so we can look at the devil and say, stand. And Paul said, just stand. You bet. And he gets scared. You know, I just had a conversation with my grandson, my 16-year-old grandson. And, you know, we tell people, read your Bible, read your Bible. But I think we need to tell people how to read the Bible. Yes. It's, you're not just reading a book. You are extracting. You may as well be mining for gold. Just imagine if you were, if you were mining for gold and you would sift through that dirt and sand and mm -hmm. you, would be looking, you would be looking intently for some glitter yes. to come yeah. up to your eyeball. Because, and that's what it's like reading the Bible because you've got to see that there's nuggets of gold in the Bible for you. And so I was explaining to my grandson why it's important to meditate on the word, not just read it, but meditate on it, get it into your heart. Because yes. in James chapter one, it says that the word would, it's, when it's taken into our heart and rooted deep inside of us, that the word of God contains the power to transform your soul. That's your emotions, your attitudes, your thinking, your memory, everything inside of you that's you. It, the Word contains the power to transform your mm -hmm. life. Yeah. 
Yeah, and the Bible says, be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. Mm -hmm. You know, and you renew our mind by you be getting uh, in, in, into the word of God. And, I've, and I know I've shared this on this uh, on the show that I've been here before, yep. you know, that we are three part beings. We yep. are, we are spirit, soul, and body, yep. but we are not, we are not first body people. That's we right. are spirit people. Exactly. You know? And when we get born again, that spirit becomes alive in us where we can actually, uh, within the bounds of nature and physical laws, we can do all things That's through right. Christ who, who strengthens us. Uh, and we can speak to mountains. See, these, these are not your words. These are not my words. <laughs> this said. is the word of God. Yes, it is. And, and, I, and I, just, I just love the part, and I say this over and over in our church. I think it's in John, the 17th chapter of John. Uh, and it's called the high priestly prayer. And it's the last time Jesus is going to yes. talk really to his father before he goes to the cross. And I've always shared that, you know, when you're going away for a long time uh, it, it, you, and you want to share something with your loved ones, you're going to share some important stuff. You're mm -hmm. not going to be, you know, just talking about how the weather is or anything like that. And, and Jesus, you know, was, you know, got down and it's called the high priestly prayer. Uh, and one of the things that he said, I think it's in John 17, 17, he says, well, you know, Father, sanctify them. And we're the them. You know, we're, that's, that's, that's us. Sanctify them with thy word. With thy word. Thy word is truth. Yes. And that is a phenomenal statement. Yep. He says, separate them so they under, so my people and your people, till he's talking to his father, understands that the word of God is yes. true. You know, so all these things that we get through here, all these beautiful promises, they're true. And yes. all of heaven, like I said earlier, stands behind that. Yep. You know, the, the Bible... This is what I said to my grandson. First of all, the word of, the word of God is the word of God. You know, what God says or has to say to us today is recorded in his Bible. Mm -hmm. We don't need to hear an audible voice from heaven. We can hear it in our spirit, hear it in our spirit. That rhymed. Anyway, but by meditating in the word of God. And so I think it's important to, for people to understand how to read the Bible mm -hmm. and and first of all, you know, I remember we had an evangelist come to our church one time and he did, did this. He says, he kissed his Bible and he said, I love the word mm -hmm. of God. Yes. The first thing we got to do is in our heart, we have to have a love for the word of God. Amen. Because Amen. Yes. it is, it reveals who Jesus is. It's in there. It reveals who Jesus is, makes him real to us. It reveals who the father is. It reveals who we are in the Father's eyes mm -hmm. and what we can be and who we can become. It's all in there. Hope is in the Word of God. Oh, my goodness, yes, yes. A light, the Word of God is a light under our path and a, and a lamp under our feet, a light under our path. It, it, we, can, we, we get discernment and wisdom from the Word of God. We, it, it helps us to make life decisions and it shows us if there is things about us that need to be mm -hmm. corrected. It reveals that too. And we want that, right? We want that to happen. But I am encouraging you, maybe you've read, say, well, I've read the Bible once. Um, well, I would, I would encourage you to try reading through the Bible every year. Absolutely. Every yeah. time I read, I've been reading scripture for 38 years years, 36 years at least, I don't remember how many years, 37 years, every time I read the Word of God, if I read it slow and meditate on it, I get something new out of it. And you can too. And the, the Bible can literally become alive to you. And what, ha what needs to happen is for the Word to become alive on mm -hmm. the inside of you. That's mm -hmm. when you know that you know. That's when your faith works. That's when, as Pastor John said, you can speak to the problems in your life you can speak the word with authority and all of heaven is there to back up your words. Amen, amen, amen. Sorry, I didn't mean you know. to take off preaching, John. <laughs> well, you know, when I read the word of God, uh, I like to uh, read it like uh, I'm reading a book or, or watching a movie. Uh, in other words, uh, when you read the word of God or you see, you're reading a, a portion of the word of God, all you have are the just the letters and, and the words there and just exactly yeah. what's going on. Well, I like to take a panoramic view sometime and I say, like well, that. I wonder what this person's doing over here. I wonder what's going, I wonder what's going on, you know, you know, back in there. And, and just for an instance of, you know, kind of where we're going, uh, I think of, uh, of Jesus after he fasted, 
for 40 days and 40 nights. Now, mm -hmm. you got to be you get, you, honest about this. He's hungry. Yeah. You know, he's son of man. He's son of God. I mean, so he's, he's hungry. And, uh, uh, and the devil tempts him, you know, three times. That's and I'm, right. a, I'm an absolute believer that this wasn't just for show. I don't believe God put that in the Bible just to say, hey, my son also was tempted by the devil, but he had nothing to be worried about. I believe the devil actually thought really? he could bring Jesus yes, down. Yes, he did. And if he actually believes that, just think what he, can, you know, what he thinks he can do to us. Right. Uh, and and, I, and one, of the, one of the temptations was, was you know, and this is kind of my paraphrasing, is uh, he looks at Jesus, and they're, they're standing eyeball to eyeball, and uh, uh, first thing you know, uh, Satan sees, and he says, he says hey, uh, you got to be hungry. Yeah, right. <laughs> you got to be hungry. And he says, "Why don't you just take up these two stones and uh, and and make some bread out of it?" Mm -hmm. And uh, and Jesus looks at him intently. Mm -hmm. You know, it's a, it's that same thing with uh, when Paul says, "You know, when you've done everything, you stand." Yes, and he's indeed. looking. He's looking him right in the eye, and he simply says marvelous words. He says, "Man doesn't live by bread alone." That's right. But by every word, every word that comes out of the mouth of God. Yes. In other words, he said, you know, yeah, sure, we're hungry and we got to take care of our needs and we got to pay our bills and we got to do this. But the important thing, remember he told Martha and Mary that, you know, Martha, well, I can't remember which one it is now, but, you know, Martha was out uh, and she was uh, cooking the, the dinner and she would, and all those things are important. But, but Jesus said, Martha, Martha. Do you know who's in the house? Yeah. <laughs> the Son of God is yeah. in the house. Oh, wow. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Drop everything. You know, we'll, we'll eat later. We'll yeah. do this later. And Mary's doing the right thing. Yeah. I know a lot of people have a hard time with that because you got to cook the food. But what, what they're trying to get across, you know, is here is the same thing Jesus said. He said, he said, the most important thing, we, please listen to me on this, the most important thing you can do every single day of your life is get the word of God into your spirit. Yes. Man does not live by the needs of this world alone, by bread alone is what Jesus said, but by every word that comes out of the mouth of God. And victory has to follow because remember he said, and that's, he's, this, is, this is what I call, I tell people, this is what we call connect the dots. One to two to three to four, we just connect the dots and pretty soon the, the dots become victory. Right. You, you know, and uh, uh, I think it's in Matthew chapter six where he goes through 32 verses and telling about all the needs that man has uh, and, and everything. And then in 6.33 he says, but seek ye first. The That's kingdom right. of God and his righteousness and all oh. the other things will be added unto you. Oh. So, Neil, and put the important things first, and that's the word of God. Yeah. Whatever it is you're, you're lacking or needing and worrying about, if we could set that aside long enough and get into the word of God, and it might take you some time. I don't like to tell people how long to read your Bible every day because I believe this. There's something about the word of God that the more you eat it, the hungrier you get and you never get full. It's it just the more you take in the word, the more you crave the word and and you never get tired of the word. But in these days ahead, if I can say this, Pastor John, we're living in some very crazy days. People no longer truth is no longer. Uh, it's it's what's the word I'm looking for? It's it's whatever people perceive truth mm -hmm. to be. Yes. Everybody's got their own idea of what truth is, and there is such a departure from the Word of God, which is truth. Christ was the embodiment of truth, and, and we are in a position, if we know the Word, I tell our youth this at church, I said, study history, including world history. Study science. Study uh, the, the Word of God, because knowledge is power yes and you can be talking to people that will say to you well you know well this is what I believe and I'll say to them oh really well that's good but did you know that Jesus said this they said that they'll say that's in the Bible mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> most people haven't read their Bible if you would read your Bible it would give you a position I don't want to say power but it would give you a position of influence to be an influence in the lives of other people who have gone astray who are deceived don't know it and that are believing something that isn't true and you're in a position to influence their life and turn them toward god yeah bro and i can remember uh when i was first uh becoming a christian 
and uh, trying to figure out this whole God thing. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, I was raised in denomination, I was raised in religion, but I wasn't necessarily raised to, uh, uh, to know Jesus Christ as my Lord and Savior. Uh, and, um, and I started getting the Word of God and I started to try to figure it out. Uh, and anyway, I got into the New Testament and the very first book, you know, I got into was Matthew. Matthew, Mark, Matthew is the first. And, and I came to a, a, a scripture in the sixth chapter of Matthew, the 27th verse. And Jesus is speaking, and it's kind of hard to understand it in the King James Version, uh, but it says, which of you, by taking thought, right. can add one cubit unto his stature? Well, I had to go look to find out what that meant, you know, but if you look into some of the other uh, translations, it says, which of you, by worrying, worrying, can add a second unto your life? And Roland, Pastor Roland, I was a worrier. I was a new father. You know, you worry about your retirement, you worry about paying yep. your bills, you worry about your kids, raising them, you worry about your marriage, you worry, you know, about putting food on the table, you worry about getting laid off, you worry about worrying. Yeah. <laughs> you know, you just worry, worry, and the more you worry, the more the devil just tosses that. And pretty soon you just, you just practically pull your hair out and say, I'm not going to make it, you know, I'm not going to make it. And that, that, when that scripture hit me, that was almost the last time mm -hmm. I stopped worrying mm -hmm. in my life. Yeah. You know, I mean, that doesn't mean I'm not concerned about things and we don't go out and work and do that. But I under, I, when I found out that it, it, Jesus spoke those words and I started to understand, I started to accept who Jesus Christ was in my life, I started, and I started to understand that if I just follow Jesus, he's going to take care of me. Mm -hmm. He's going to take care of my family. That's right. And the worries just sort of fell off. Which yeah. of you by taking thought or which of you by worrying? And if you think about that, that's true. Yeah. You can't, you know, you can worry about this. Then it doesn't change the facts, nope. you know? And then I, you know, and, and I think John says in the, uh, the evangelist, John says over in one of his epistles, you know, it's a beautiful word. He says, beloved, I wish above all things. Yes, I love that. I verse. wish above all things that you prosper and be in good health, even as your soul. And you said earlier, your soul is your emotions, yep. your thinking, your creativity, your free will, uh, how you look at things, how you think about things. And that's just it. As your soul, you start thinking about the correct things. Uh, you, you will find out that you know, health will come to you, prosperity, uh, or everything God has for you will, will, will come to you. Yes, it will. Wow. You know, it's um, in John 14, Jesus says, If any man loves me, he will keep my commands, mm -hmm. and I will ask the Father, and he will send another helper, a comforter, the Holy Spirit. But what commands? You know, most people think of when you hear the word commands, they think of the Ten Commandments. But if you study the four Gospels, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, he was literally telling people yes. how to live. Mm -hmm. How to live. How to live abundantly. How, how to have good success in life. How to reverence and honor the Father. And how to treat one another in interpersonal relationships. The commands that Jesus is speaking about is the words that he spoke. So if you go back get a red letter Bible, and you go read all the words that Jesus said, all the admonitions that he gave on how to get along with and love your neighbor, right? Yes, yes. How to be a good father or mother, how, 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 to, how to be a blessing to other people, how to be a servant. You know, these are the things, it's the little things in day-to-day -day life that Jesus was referring to. He says, if you keep my commands. So it's in other words, it's living like Jesus lived. You know, with a humble heart, with a servant's heart, desiring to please God, wanting to get along with everybody that's possible. In fact, Jesus said, be at peace with all men as much as it is, no, Paul said that, as much mm -hmm. as it's possible with you. But, but the Word of God is our staple food, isn't that what they that's call right. it? That's right, yep, yep. We could, we can, you can't live like that without having the Word of God living on the inside of you. In fact, Jesus said in John 15, He says, he says, if, my, if you live in me, have life in me, and my words live in you, you can ask whatever you will. Amen, amen. That'd yep. be like getting a credit card, That's John. right. That's a, yeah. <laughs> no limit on it. <laughs> yeah, and I think, you know, in, uh, and, and Paul says it in, you know, in 1 Corinthians, uh, he says that, you know, in, at the end of our lives, you know, people are not going to judge us and talk about us and how many cars we had in the garage, right. how big our house. He said, we're going to be remembered for three things, our faith, 
our hope and, and our love. And he mm -hmm. says, you know, the greatest of these is love. But you know, our faith, not just in God, but our yeah. faith in our wife, our faith in our husband, our faith in our kids, our faith in society, and hope. Are we a hopeful person? Or are, are we one of those hopeless persons? You yeah. know, our hope, believing that tomorrow's going to be a better day, next week's going to be a better week, and then our love, just yeah. love. And the Bible says, love never fails. Yeah. You cannot fail if you love people. John, what I'd like to do in closing out this section, the Bible's a big book. Mm -hmm. If someone's watching this and they say, but, but where, where do I read? Where should I, what should I open to? Where would you send them to in the Word of God well, you know, to you, start? We didn't talk about this beforehand, but I'm, I'm, glad, <laughs> I'm glad you asked me that because I get asked this a lot. I hit one of the Gospels, you know, for, you know, for sure. Matthew, Mark, Luke, or John, just to understand yes. the, uh, who Jesus, Jesus is. And most people say the Gospel of John, but, you know, any of the four. But I, I love the epistles of Galatians, Ephesians, and Philippians. Yes. They're right there. They're, they're, all of them are just four or five chapters long, and they, they teach, Paul teaches the doctrine of what Jesus Christ did in the four Gospels. Yes. Jesus did it, and now Paul goes back and teaches oh, wow. what he did. That's good. <laughs> Jesus didn't have time to teach it because yep. he was doing it. Yes. And that's, and that's the, the, the power that Paul had. He taught, it was, that's all revelation stuff you know, there. Amen. And it just, it's, it, to me, it's fairly easy reading, and it's promise reading. Awesome. It tells us you know, uh, the good things that, that are in store for us. So yes. Galatians, Ephesians, Philippians, in any order you want. That's awesome. And you know, if you're a young person especially, I encourage young people, read the book of Proverbs. Yes. There happens yes. to be 30 or 31 Proverbs. Mm -hmm. One a and day. One a day, mm -hmm. read, and then go back and reread it. I tell teenagers, if you want to be successful and prosper in life, read the book that the, the wisest man that ever lived wrote. And because there's so much wisdom in the book of Proverbs for young people. So, and if somebody's really hurting, uh, going through a difficult time, uh, uh, sad or brokenness, I direct them to the Psalms. Psalms, I love Psalms. Psalms, mm -hmm. because there's, those Psalms become my prayers and I pray them out. But anyway, th thank you for watching today. Now please, please don't, don't turn on the channel, stay tuned because John, Pastor John's gonna bring you a message that's gonna inspire you, I promise. Hello and welcome to Coming Home. First of all, I want to thank KFXB TV for having me here and I look forward to sharing with you the Word of God. Today I'm going to do a little teaching rather than preaching. Uh, now someone asked me one time what's the difference between teaching and preaching and teaching is, begins with the letter T and preaching begins with the letter P and that's probably about all the difference that I know of but today I just want to do a little teaching uh, and but before we start, uh, let us say a little prayer. Uh, Father, today I just thank you for the privilege to share the Word of God. Thank you for coming into my life and thank you for blessing me and, and my family. And I pray a blessing upon everybody who's watching and listening uh, to this show. And I pray this and I believe it in Jesus' name. Amen. Today I want to talk about three words that Jesus spoke on the cross. And I want to go through about seven uh, points uh, about it. And the three words are, it is finished. It is finished. Now, if we go to John, and we're gonna, I'm going to go through a, a whole bunch of scriptures uh, in, this, in the next half hour or so. So if you grab, you can get your Bibles and you know, grab them and get a notebook and write them down. I believe they will truly, truly help you uh, in your victorious walk with Jesus Christ. And so we're going to start in the book of John, chapter uh, 19. And uh, it's, it's in verse 30, and it's the title of my message. Jesus is on the cross. He's done his job. And here's what he says. It says that when Jesus, therefore, had received the vinegar, that's what he was, he said, I thirst. He was, yeah, they were giving him this to drink. He said, it is finished. And then he bowed his head and he gave up the ghost or gave up his spirit. Now, what I want 
to share with you today that the Greek word, what Jesus said when he said, it is finished, it's a three-letter phrase, what he said was in Greek, he says, tet ele stay, tet ele stay. And that means my job is over, my job is accomplished, I did what you set me out to do. Now there's two ways of looking at this. Uh, for example, if you trained and you finished a 10K run, and when you were done, you would say, ah, it is finished. But you wouldn't use this word if you'd, if you'd done it back then. This, the word, the phrase that we look at this so often is, it is finished, means past tense. It is done. It's over with. And then we start fresh. And that's what you would do if you were running that race. You would say a different word. You would say, it is finished. I finished this race. Now I got to train for another. But if you were paying your last payment on a car payment or on your house mortgage, you would use this word. You would say, tet eleste. And you would say, it is finished. And it would be called the present perfect tense. And this is important because what, what, when, you, when you make that last payment on your house, you don't have to move out of the house. You're not done and you know, now you got to go buy another house. No. All that's finished is your payments. You now own the house and you get to live in that house for as long as you want. You get to drive that car for as long as you want. In other words, it's a continuing, it is finished. It is a continued finished rather than just running that race. It's finished and now you got to start all over again. And that's exactly what Jesus said. He says, tet ale shte. And he says, it is finished and it's going to continue to finish in every born-again Christian's life for the rest of time until he comes back again. It's not just a one-time event. So we ask the question, what was finished? What was finished? So with that, we turn to the book of Isaiah in the Old Testament. Isaiah in the Old Testament, chapter 53 and verse 5. 53 and verse 5. Now, Isaiah, the prophet, wrote this prophecy. It's a prophetic word 700 years before Jesus was born. 700 years he prophesied this. And here's what he wrote. Starting at, uh, well, so we'll start with verse 3. He was despised and rejected of men, a man of sorrows and acquainted with grief. And we hid, as it were, our faces from him. He was despised and we esteemed him not. Surely he has borne our griefs and carried our sorrows, yet we did esteem him stricken and smitten of God and afflicted. But he was wounded for our transgressions, he was bruised for our iniquities, the chastisement of our peace was upon him, and with his stripes we are healed. Now Jesus said on the cross, it is finished. We ask the question, what did he finish? And here it is, let me go by it, let me go through it, line by line. Here's what he did, number one, he bore all of our griefs. We do not have to live in sorrow every single day of our lives. He bore our griefs. He knows when you hurt. He knows when a bad, something bad happens in your life. He's with you. He said, he'll, I'll never leave you or I'll never, and I'll never forsake you. So he bore our griefs. He carried our sorrows. Number two, he carried our sorrows. Number three, he carried all of our griefs. Number four, he was wounded for our transgressions. He paid the penalty for all the things that we've done wrong. He was bruised for our iniquities, for the things that we've sinned. He was bruised for that. He was chastised for our peace so we can have the peace that passes all understanding today. And finally, he was scourged or he was beaten for our healing. And here it says, it says, by his stripes we are healed. 
Over in 1 Peter chapter 2 and verse 22, 24, Peter says, by his stripes. Now he's speaking in the future, in the past, it's we were healed. We were healed the day Jesus Christ died on the cross. So now we know that it's finished and it's a continuing finishing. We know now what was finished so we can have victory. So now, how does God want us to live our life? Here's point number three. Go clear back to the book of Genesis, chapter one. That's right at the beginning. That's where it starts. Chapter one. And start at verse 26. It says, And God said, Let us make man in our image, after our likeness, and let them, that's us, let them have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the fowl of the air and over the cattle and over all the earth and over every creeping thing that creeps upon the earth. Now that's the old time, way back then, talk about what was going on. But what, he, what he's saying in essence today in the, uh, in the 2016 year, he's saying, he's saying, and uh, I will take care of all your concerns. You will have dominion over all of your situations. Amen? And the reason is, is the very first part of this. We've got to catch this because the devil has lied to us so much that we are worthless, that, that we've failed too many times, that uh, we've gone through a divorce or we've gone through two divorces or, 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 or we've sinned uh, in, in some other kind of a sin or we've done this or we've kind of done that and, and there's no way God can love us. There's no way we could ever be worthy how, of what he did on the cross and that's all a bunch of uh, a, a bunch of boo hickey, you know, it, it is. Because he says, he says, and God said... Let us, and when he says use us, he's talking about the Trinity, Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. He says, let us make man, how? In our image. In the image of God you were created. In the image of God I was created. Praise God, isn't that exciting? And he says, he says uh, and let them, uh, and he says, in our image, after our likeness. Folks, we look like God. We look like the Trinity of God, Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. It says it right there. He's talking about our spirits, not talking about our outward look, because we all look differently. But on the inside, we are uh, resemblances of the Trinity, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. Let us make man in our image. And then let them have dominion. So that's, that was lost when Adam sinned. But when Jesus Christ said it is finished, and it's a continuing finishing, remember, tet ele shte. It's, it's continuing to finish every single day of my life. I have the opportunity to have dominion over my circumstances, which God had settled and put forth in the book of Genesis chapter 1, 26 and 27. So number one, we know it is, it's over with. It is finished. This, Jesus did it. He did it all. He did it all. And, and number two, what was finished? We found out in Isaiah. He bore our graves. He was wounded for our transgressions. Uh, uh, by his stripes, we've been healed. We've been forgiven. We've been set free. We've got, we've got the whole thing. Uh, and then number, number the third point is, is uh, uh, he returns us back to the way he created us uh, from the very beginning and for us to understand that we uh, were created, we have been created uh, in the image of the Trinity of, of God and that we have dominion over our circumstances. So now we go to uh, point number four, and I want you to catch you know, this, and I want you to just listen to this for a second. It says, when we agree with somebody. Don't make any difference who it is. When we agree with somebody, we voluntarily give them influence over our lives. I'm going to say it again. When we agree with somebody, be it good or be it bad, when we agree with them, we give that person influence over our lives. So in other words, if a, if a teacher, when you were growing up, said, you're never going to amount to anything, Susie, or you're never going to amount to anything, Billy, you're always going to be a problem child, so on and so forth. If you agree with that, 
then you're giving influence to that person who has said that. You're giving influence, influence to what they said. However, if someone says, you can do anything you want in this world, Billy, you're, you're, you're a great dancer, Susie, however it is, and you agree with that, then that becomes an influence in your life. See how important words are? See how important words are in our life? And, and we have to be careful what we agree with. I, I, I throw out all negativity out of my life. I, I just won't receive it. I just won't accept it. Now, if someone criticizes me or criticizes something about me, the first thing I'll ask myself, is it true? You know, but if I feel it's not true, it's gone. It's gone. I don't think about it. I don't worry about it anymore. I got too, too many other things, you know, you know going on in, in my life. To, you know, I just won't, I won't allow it uh, in, in, in my life. Uh, and then the second thing I want you to understand is, is when we submit to someone, we give them power into our lives. So the first one is when we agree with someone, we give them influence in our lives. And the second point is, is when we submit to someone, we give them power into our lives. Just think about that for a second. Now I want, you, I want to take you to, uh, to two scriptures. And the first one is, and I'll wait for just a second, it's over in the book of Amos. It's in the book of Amos. It's toward the end of the Old Testament. A lot of people don't even know that uh, some of these prophets uh, are in the Bible. They're called the minor prophets, not that they're minor in any way, uh, stretch or form, but uh, they're called the minor prophets. And, and Amos uh, wrote... Um, phenomenal word that, that he wrote, that I wrote here. Now, it, 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 it correlates with the first part of, uh, of the, the, the thought that I just gave you. When we agree with someone, we give them influence. And so here's what God says in Amos chapter 3, verse 3. Amos chapter 3, verse 3. Can two walk together except they be agreed? Can two walk together except they be agreed? Just think about that. In a marriage, you've got to be in agreement. For a happy family, everybody's got to be in agreement. It doesn't mean you don't disagree. It doesn't, doesn't mean you have an argument. For the, but the whole nature of the thing, you walk uh, in agreement. Now, ask yourself this. I wonder what God thinks of me. Right now in my life, I wonder what God thinks of me. If you're having a hard time answering that, then you need to listen to the next words that come out of my mouth. God created you in his image and in his likeness, we just read it in Genesis, and you absolutely are the apple of his eye. He loves you, he loves you, he loves you unconditionally. It has nothing to do with what you've done or haven't done. God loves you, and he thinks you're precious, he thinks you're special, he thinks you're valuable, and he thinks you're unique. And on and on, all the adjectives that you could throw in there. He loves you. Somebody needs to hear that today. God loves you. And here's the problem. If you don't love yourself, or if you don't think God loves you, then you're always going to be walking against God. Do you see that? Because it says, can two walk together unless they be agreed? Please start looking at yourself as a child of the living God, created, valuable, loved, loved, loved. If you can just start changing that thinking of yourself, you'll be in agreement with God. Because he thinks you're something special. Amen? I hope someone caught a hold of that. And then the second one is, when we submit to someone, 
we give them power over our lives. Now go to the book of the New Testament, the book of James. James chapter 4 and verse 7, I believe it is. James chapter 4 and verse 7. And remember I said, uh, when we submit to someone, we give them power into our lives. In verse 7, chapter 4 of James, it says, Submit yourselves, therefore, to God. Submit yourself to God. In other words, say, hey God, you're the boss. You're the boss over my life. And then it says, if we'll start doing that, he says, then resist the devil and he will flee from you. Submit yourselves, therefore, to God. So in other words, what you're doing is, is you're transferring, transferring every power that the enemy has had over your life, every power that the world has had ever over your life, you're transferring that power and you're saying, I'm giving it to you, God. I'm submitting to you. I'm submitting myself, therefore, to you, God. And then as we submit that, he now has his power flowing through this, and now we're able to resist the devil. And when we start resisting the devil, it says right here, he will flee from you. He's got to go. He's got to go. That addiction has got to go. That bad habit has got to go. Those thoughts of, of, of ne negative thinking have got to go. Praise God Almighty. This is the word of God. Submit yourselves therefore unto God. Resist the devil and he will flee from you. See, a lot of people try to do that second, the second part of that verse and not do the first. They try to resist the devil and, and expect him to flee from him, but they're not submitting to God. How do you submit to God? Just give everything over to him. Just give it all to him. Give your hurts, give your pains, give your headaches, give your, give your, uh, your bad reports from the doctor, give your family problems, give your son, give your daughters, give, just give your finances, give everything over to God. Over Matthew chapter 6 and verse 33, it says, seek first the kingdom of God. See, we don't have to have it all figured out. He just says, seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And all things will be added unto you. He said, I'll take care of you. He's not looking for perfection. He's not looking for perfection because we're not perfect. He just wants us to know that he is our father. And we are his children. And he's going to do the very best that he can to provide for us. If we will just acknowledge him and agree with him and submit unto him. And he'll take care of all the rest. Point number six. And this is what I want to close with the next couple points. Is uh, found over in, in Proverbs. Proverbs chapter 18. These are very, very key, key points. I think I'll first I'll go to... Uh, First, I think I'm going to go to uh, Proverbs chapter 23 and verse 7. Proverbs 23, verse 7. For as he thinks, or as, as you and I think, as a man thinks in his heart or in his spirit, so is he. So as he thinks in his heart, so is he. Here's the point. We've got to think like God wants us to think. We've got to put thought, positive thoughts into our mind. We've got to hope all things, the Word of God says. Believe all things. Get back into a way of believing 
not just in God, but start believing in yourself once again. Sure, we've all had failures. Oh my goodness, if, if you'd have seen my life, as I call it BC, if you'd seen my life BC before Christ, and my life AD after death. Oh, there's an old song that says, oh, what a change uh, in my life. I thrived on failure. I went from failure to failure to failure. But then a man came into my life. His name was Jesus. And he touched me. And he made me whole. And I fell in love with this man. And he's never let me down. Have I had valleys? Oh my goodness. Has everything worked out perfect in my life? Absolutely not. But every night when I've gone to bed, I've always known this, that my God will see me through what I'm going through. I've always felt that. And if I haven't felt it, I've known it. Because that's what the Word of God says. It's a process. It's a learning process. And you need to get a victory here and a little bit of a victory there. And you start to see what God can do. You've got to start thinking like God thinks. And the second one is found in Proverbs chapter 18. In verse 21. It goes right alongside with the thinking. It says, death and life are in the power of the tongue, and they that love it shall eat the fruit thereof. Be careful what you speak. Be careful how you say things. Speak life. Speak health. Speak victory. Speak overcoming. That's what God wants from us. That's when we start to see when the book of Amos start to become agreed with him. Because that's what he speaks. The word of God, you go through the word of God, promise after promise after promise after promise is life after life after life after life. Speaking life into our lives. And then as we get stronger in the Lord, we start to find out the devil is not as big and as tough as he thought he was. Praise God Almighty. Think the way God wants you to think. Speak the way God wants you to speak. Believe the way God wants you to believe. And start agreeing with the way God sees you. He sees you created in his image and his likeness. And right now, someone just say, you know, my past is finished. It's over with. I'm serving Jesus Christ. Well, God bless you. Thank you. And remember one thing. God loves you, and so do I. Blessings. Mm -hmm.